Hi, and welcome to episode three of Business Source. Today, uh, I'm pleased to have John Hayes with me of uh, JCH Communications, um, who help companies with their digital marketing strategies, websites, SEOs, all things marketing. So really exciting uh, topic to talk about. John, welcome, Thank, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. No problem, mate. Um, you and I talk regularly uh, you know you support connecting business you know, my company with with our digital strategy with the website people check it out www.connectingbusiness.co.uk um, and you know you help give me ideas around ways in which that i can connect share um, things with with my clients and, and prospects so it'd be great to uh, get your views on a couple of things mainly or first in your business, you know what what you've been finding since this whirlwind of a uh, six months began uh, back in March. So how mm. how things affected JCH Communications, and secondly, what have you seen with your client base? And a subsection of that is how have you helped your clients during this period um, pivot, change, adapt, get through, you know, uh, get through this tough time. So yeah. yeah, over to you. Well, look, initially the the shock and the horror, wasn't it, to to start with? I don't think anybody knew what was uh, what was going to happen, what was going to go on. Um, it was all new to to me, uh, and quickly found out talking to um, my partners just how you know it, it was strange, strange times and. Mm -hmm. I mean, we lost immediately 30, 40 percent of our business overnight wow. just because of people cancelling their SEO contracts, their fees. Mm -hmm. um, that was their initial re reaction to it. And this kind of panic uh, set in, which was magnified by the consumers, really. You, you know, if you went to a supermarket, what was these uh, long queues all about? You know toilet rolls, pastas, you know, yeah. buying pasta. I mean, I was thinking, this, what's going on? I just don't really understand it. And then the newspaper headlines, they never help our great British press um, scaring the living daylights out of us, really. I mean, yeah, very, very strange times. But after that kind of initial two or three days, it was almost like, um, well, what are we going to do? We can't do anything. We've got to kind of take stock of where we are with our own business. Mm. Where we, how are we going to help our existing customers? And and I must admit that, you know, with the, with the conflicting headlines, it was a bit of a strange, strange situation. So you put, I mean, those people that kind of carried on regardless and kept calm, I think they, they were the main benefactors. Um, and hopefully we we show that to our customer base just how so so, so you know. would it be fair to say that um i think just like all of us we perhaps were somewhat complacent in those first few days you know we're going to get locked down oh yeah well in fact even prior to that oh, it won't happen to us we'll just carry on not going to happen over here it's only a thing affecting people in china um so we get complacent that way all of a sudden we're on lockdown, we're at home, nobody's commuting, we've gone from a million miles an hour to zero, we're at home and uh, we're kind of like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, yeah. and, you know, it'll just go back to, go back to normal. Um, and then suddenly <laughs> you realise, actually that's not the case. Yeah, well, it certainly wasn't normal for us because, like I said, there was we're in the, a lot of our clients are in the hospitality business, conference, meeting rooms, leisure, leisure industry. They took a massive hit overnight. So I never thought for one minute it's going to get back to normal within the you know a week or two. This this was going to be a long term thing. So um, after that initial shock and horror and panic, if you like. It was a question of how we can help our customers. And it was all about communication at the end of the day. And 
how you communicated with them. And what we then tried to do was to send out a series of emails, uh, the traditional email marketing strategy, if you like, keeping in touch with your customer base. And if, if you haven't got a customer base, then you should have because uh, you've got to keep in touch somehow with those individuals. And whether you make it tailor-made to them or you're just sending out a general one, um, it was key to, to help them think strategically and pass that on to their customer base. So yeah. any kind of hints and tips at that particular time that you could give them to, to keep this kind of calmness and, you know, don't exactly stop what you're doing. I think that was, a number of them did obviously, but look, it's all about money. And I think that was gonna get through to a lot of people and, you know, yourself included, it must have been uh, a time when you reflect on your business and think, right, what can I, how can I save at this initial period? Especially when it happens to you, and then yeah. you think, oh, me, that's that's 30, 40% of your turnover gone overnight. Mm. How are you going to resurrect that that extra money to? to yeah, build? and uh, you know, I, I touched on this briefly in uh, episode two of this podcast with with Lauren about keeping in contact uh, with with your clients, but this um, being the captain of the ship and not panicking you know you know it's like i guess the swan furiously paddling underneath you might be doing that internally but even mm. then there are techniques that we can employ to keep ourselves mentally and physically strong and healthy um but externally we need to show people that we are we're okay we're here for you we're stable we're not going anywhere we'll support you um because that instills confidence you know if they know that you know John's not panicking and and calling up every five minutes asking for business because he's lost 30 percent of his business it, it's going to stink of desperation if you like that you oh my goodness you need this this bit this deal and then they start thinking wait a minute if he's panicking this much how stable you know should I really be using him so having this calmness uh, and sharing that you're there to help support guide um your clients th through this process has definitely helped and what we've seen through connecting business is our clients coming to us saying we didn't really fully understand what we needed this database for you know we've been collecting all this data in the crm because yeah. um, we've, we've been in a fortunate position where the phone's been ringing or people have been contacting us via email or the website to buy our stuff and we've never needed to use our data to contact them out contact mm -hmm. back and we've got no idea of the state of the data we've got. So can you help us make sense of it, bring it all together, get it into a structure and a format so that we can send out these communications? Because I think you know, the point that you just made there, that key is communication. If you're kept in the dark about something and a situation and what's going on, you don't know what to think. And invariably, um, I would say 99% of people don't have a positive upward spiral of thought about what's happening. It's always mm -hmm. a downward spiral. So I'm not getting any communications from John at JCH Communications. Likelihood is he's going under. You know, that, yeah. that I mean, it's, it spirals down to that, right? Yeah, it's keeping your name out in front. If you've got a brand, keeping that that name out and that logo out in front of the customers. and and. I think that was crucial at the time, and you're right. If you don't, if they don't hear from you, they're going to think what what's going on. And I know it sounds obvious, but um, it was very, very uh, crucial in that initial three or four days to to make sure that your customers are, are happy with what you're trying to do. You forget about the thirty or forty percent we we lost. Um, we still kept in touch with them, but we knew. Um, that you know, we could come back to them at any time and do a blanket email just saying, look, if it, we're here if you need us, don't hesitate to come back to us. And yeah. our current set of clients that, that were actually working through, through all of this still needed services. And um, that, that carried on regardless. And, and it was also, but the, the, it's, it's understanding what their, their clients or their customers needed at that time. Um, and that was a, a Kind of little curveball that was thrown into us, and in as much that understanding their market a little bit more 
and a, a little bit more understanding how to approach them, whether it's a blanket email campaign or a, a kind of cherry pick campaign for each individual mm. and, and maybe streamline that particular um, thoughts and, and whatever you're going to put to them, um, getting that, that kind of uh, bedded down. Yeah, because uh, I, I guess the, the the thing is, you know, when when you look at revenue streams and cash flow, if you you know you've done marketing historically, and that tends to influence your pipeline and revenue and therefore cash flow, whether it be days, weeks, months further down the line, depends on your business, your product, the turn, you know, the sales cycle, that kind of thing, all influences that. But you don't expect to do very few businesses let's say that are b2b do a marketing campaign today where people buy tomorrow that's business to consumer generally and obviously that's that's one element but b2b is more of a longer sales cycle typically where you're selling a, a solution or a, a product that's going to go into their business that's, that's core to their business so by pausing any of your marketing you've now got a gap in the influence of that revenue stream and, and cash flow further to the right as it as it calls um, and the longer that you pause that marketing the further to the right it's going to impact your cash flow so you'll end up with a gap in mm. your in your budgets probably so if there's you know uh, a question directly to you what kind of things can clients be doing that i don't want to say minimal cost but isn't going to cost the earth you know isn't going to cost tens of thousands um, that can mean that they can continue doing something to their client base that will keep that name out there that can potentially keep something going into that funnel further right down down the line yeah well look we we done an, uh, a number of videos animated videos where you're using existing stock photography um, or if we were lucky enough to have existing videos anyway um yeah. that was kind of cost effective way for that particular or a particular client to keep in touch with their customer base everyone likes a video a picture tells a thousand um words um it's easier to digest the mm. uh, visual aspect and a, a short video of one uh, one and a half minutes um can get their story across and they're relatively cheap to put together in as much as um, sure there's a script and a voiceover and obviously there's the visual but um, we were able to get a number of those videos out there um, and uh, through to the client to, for them to, to, to send out to their customer base and it told that story quite quickly and, and it, it, it's still going on now because I mean you know as well as anybody with your website it's it, you've got to have a website out there because it's it adds all that it's your shop window to the the internet and the world etc cetera, etc cetera. but a video um on your front page is so such more it's so much more easier to to digest um yeah. and it's far more effective and that helps, helps to relate you know so you know i've got videos on my home page and, and and the aim there um is that people can see me as a human being see me talk listen to what i've got to say and mm. hopefully there'll be some sort of connection there rather than just a a you know website where i've got no idea who's behind behind it and of course in large organizations sometimes they do end up being faceless you know the employees become numbers the ceo you never see apart from a massive conference conferences and that kind of thing so that's um that, that's interesting just jumping back to that communication thing i wanted to share because it it, it, it it was quite pertinent um i recently cancelled my health insurance with a leading provider because i'm now receiving cover through my wife's organization mm -hmm. um and i knew the guy who i'd set it up through the you know the agent if you like he was all great he knew it was coming it wasn't as if i was cancelling because of the covid situation pre-warned him sent him an email and he said yeah no problem i'll pass it on to to hq and then within a week i receive uh, an email notification through that leading providers portal my, my private portal through them 
thanking me, saying, you know, we, we've received your letter, um, thanks very much for communicating with us, there's no problems, just want to take this time to say thank you for, for, for your business uh, over the past, past few years. If you need us again, we're here again. Uh, take care. Thanks very much. And I mm. thought, wow, you know, this has come from, from a leading provider. And I now don't feel, and I know it's an auto generated email, but I don't feel like a, a number. I feel like, mm. hang on a minute, they communicated in a human way. Mm. Even though a human may not have touched it, but in a human in a human way, that's made me feel. Do you know what? I, I would happily go back to them or recommend them to to somebody else because of the way I've been treated and and the the communication, the dialogue that that they've shared with me. And yeah. typically, I feel you know my experience of dealing with the larger larger organisations that gets lost somewhere along the line. It, yeah. it, it yeah. works within the smaller small businesses where the owner of the business has a personal relationship with every client and picks up the phone or sends an email back saying, you know, thanks very much and, and sorry to see you go and all the rest of it. But it seems to get lost along the line. But yeah, I just wanted to, to share that with you. But, uh, well, you know, right, you're, you're right. And we had that situation because on a website is obviously the contact form. So on the leisure side and the conference and the meeting room side of, of a number of our clients, um, that contact form was still being used and it's how you reacted to that contact form because we get copies of it and we were able to alert um, those people that were off through furlough or the key players still that were around and there was an enormous amount of um, of, of those contact form uh, communications coming through um, we were able to help out with 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 that and making it a lot more personal but isn't it funny how and I'm sure you've 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 had this experience where you've uh, rung a, an 0800 number or an 0345 number, and you've got that response where we're sorry, we're experiencing high volumes of calls, and oh, you just think, oh, how much longer do I have to? I think there's been a lot of companies, and they're normally the blue chip companies that are um, using this as a not an excuse, but the service of, yeah. of hanging around online and banks and typically the banks or our leading uh, uh, TV provider in in the UK. I don't want to mention any names and get ourselves well, into any trouble, but yeah. yeah, it's it's you know it's it's pathetic really. Uh, yeah. We we can't get away with it with our custom base. You certainly can't. Yeah. But it's funny how the the larger the organisation, the the um, you know, the more excuses they seem to come up with. And it, it really kind of is... Uh, is... So, so trying to get back on a positive spin, John, um, the uh, those tidbits or those uh, things that people can be doing to keep that communication, that dialogue going. You've mentioned the, the videos there. Sound, sounds great. And uh, I've, I'm certainly an advocate of those. Uh, e email marketing. So let's assume that I've been keeping a, a fairly decent record of my prospects, suspects, clients. Um, what kind of things can I, can, I, can I do with that from an email marketing standpoint? Uh, because as Connecting Business, we tend to deal with larger small businesses. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but small businesses at the bigger end of, the, of that scale and then in, into the medium size organizations where they've got marketing automation platforms and probably someone there within the business who's responsible for it but there's a heck of a lot of companies out there that don't have that email marketing platform and don't have a dedicated resource for it you know it's all hands to the pump right now they don't have the time um what what can they be doing what how could and, I'm not, and i don't want to do a plug for jch comms here but companies like yours what should they be doing with clients that are in that situation, do you feel? Well, from our own pers personal point of view, we, we've, I mean, we kept in touch with um, with relevant, and I mean, it sounds obvious, doesn't it? But but relevant, maybe humorous, maybe um, interesting. It's got it's got to have some kind of angle to it. It's a story that you you have to invent, and it has to have a, a beginning, a, a central bit, but the the actual end of that story is the key to it and I think the marketing journey is journey isn't it 
yeah, well, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's looking back, I could give you examples, but there are so long as you've got that that name in front, sooner or later, that customer, obviously, if he he or she um, it, it, it is listening and is reading them, sooner or later they're gonna they're gonna come back and they're gonna have a question for you. They 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 buy off you, hopefully. But it's it's this communication is so, so key to to everything. Um, so to go from, to from a technology through. standpoint, though, um, John, just just to hammer that point home, um, I'm a small business. I let's say I don't have that email marketing platform. Can I come to you, for example? Uh, again, it's not a plug. It's an it's an example. Companies like you that are providing services. You know, you're not alone in, in what you do. Um, can I say, hey, John, here's my customer base. Um, I want to get some messages out to them. Can you help? Do you have the platforms available that you can upload my data to in order to send those email messages out and uh, do those journeys, the, those communications? Well, we done it, didn't we? Um, we done it, I think it was this time last year, didn't it, with, with you, where you uh, we, we've, we actually done that email campaign for you and you right. came across a, an ex-client of yours, an ex-customer that you got business from? Sure. Is that right? I can, I can remember uh, doing that for you. I, and it, I'm not going to pull the wool over anyone's eyes here. That was, uh, you helped us construct the email. Yeah. Uh, and then we sent it via a data provider. They had yeah. an email marketing platform. Yeah. So I guess, uh, so there's, there's, there's two elements then. So uh, one, as JCH Communications, do you have a platform that you can upload customers' data into and send out? Or is it a case of um, you helping them to create this messaging? Because we're not all content writers, right? We're not all copywriters. We don't know how to say things. We know how to speak and talk about what we do. But visually, when we're reading something, it has to be written in a certain way that, that resonates. So someone like you can help with that. And then uh, that third spoke uh, is the um, vehicle, if you like, for sending that that out. Yeah. Um, and typically you would use a, a third party company for that that's got that platform for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. We come up with the creative, if you like, we come up with the the, um, the ideas, the content. If it needs a, a visual, we'll, we'll come up with that. We work in conjunction with our uh, third party, and um, they then identify obviously potential customers. Um, just you know how what at what level do you want to go in at, and then that gets handed to that third party and carries on and yeah. feedback. Is then given, and then it's up to which is, and this is the key to this is the the feedback that is is actually passed back to the client. I mean, we've had experiences in the past where we've given those potentially two or three hundred leads to the customer, and, and nothing's been done about it. There's been no contact at all, which is yeah, bonkers, absolutely bonkers. Um, and that it, it's the after, it's the aftercare that. That that particular uh, the feedback that you get is crucial as well. Don't mm -hmm. just leave it, please. If it's a phone call, an email, anything, but look, nine times out of ten, it may not come to anything. But yeah, sometimes, I think, as in your case, um, you got business from it, I believe. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess when we when we're working with clients, you know, what frustrates me is having been in software sales myself, and you know, you cry out for leads to come in. And then you don't stay on top of those leads, or you leave it a few days before you, you call them. You know, there's this fear factor of picking up the phone and actually talking to someone. I know you're a huge advocate of yeah. oh, no. uh, yes, email's got its time and its place, and WhatsApp's got its time and its place, but pick up the flipping phone, right, and and have a chat with with mm -hmm. the customer. I think yeah. that um, that qualify it in and out as quickly as possible. Is, is is key to to stop wasting your own time on on things that aren't genuine, but those ones that are genuine deserve the respect of being spoken to quickly, because they've got they've gone out of their way to 
fill out a web form, phone you, email you, this saying, I want to have a chat with you. Yeah. And if you if you're going to leave that 24 hours, you know, I've been in organizations where they've gone to the other end of the extreme where they there's warnings and flashes and, and go, things that go off in the system if you if the lead is not spoken to within like five minutes. Yeah. Because it's so fresh in their mind when they've just done it that 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 quickly. So um, it's really important for us as uh, as consultants and as developers, configurators of CRM systems, to make sure that that process flow happens on time, so that when a lead form gets filled in, it appears in the CRM system. The correct person gets notified immediately that there's a new lead being created and that person can pick up the phone and have that conversation so that's that's what we've been finding people have actually discovered that that process is either non-existent and yeah. it's just coming into somebody's email box um, and then if they're on holiday for a day then <clears throat> all of a sudden that lead's gone cold because they've moved on to something else somebody else has phoned them because they've filled out a different lead form because you didn't phone them back so by connecting those dots and getting that process uh, streamlined and automated, web for you know you're doing an outbound campaign, send them to a landing page, get them to fill out a form, create a lead in your CRM system, get it in front of the person responsible for calling them as quickly as possible. Literally, with you know as soon as it's created, it should be going in front yeah. of the person responsible. Lee, what about look? Who who who's the greatest at the Amazon? To name the one, how communication personified? They're brilliant. You can you can't you can't fault them. Um, every if ever you you're buying anything on the internet, they're just keeping in touch every stage. And I've got two or three um, where I've ordered stuff not through Amazon at the moment and um, one's a major and it's f funny enough it's um for um some a gift set through, through a, a third party i won't name them but i ordered on the 12th of august nothing you chase them up you get the uh it'll be shipped but on the on the 7th of september yeah uh, I can't give you a delivery date, but it's going to be shipped on the 7th of september it was originally ordered on the 12th of august nothing heard nothing and i'm having to chase it up and here we are a month later and it's similar with another uh, a product where again it's i've had one email in the last two weeks to tell me where we're at in, in terms of the delivery amazon keep you in touch all the time and that's well, the key communication. yeah and communication exactly i'm just about to say that uh, it doesn't matter what form it's in whether it be phone uh, call or WhatsApp, text message, um, something on your website, a LinkedIn post, a Twitter post, um, but direct email to somebody who's purchased from you is paramount. You know, this is somebody who's giving you their money. This is the the golden goose, right? You know, this is what we all are aiming to achieve: people to part with their hard-earned cash, whether it be consumer or business, mm. and they've done it they've given it you and you've chosen to say nothing to them yeah uh, so it's really key that that communication element um, i'm uh, i'm really with you there um uh, and i guess the other thing is you know the the methods which you know be different so you know we for example are doing these podcasts something different we've not done them before um we've done videos um as well we're doing email communication uh, it's worked for us partly in the past, um, but for what we do, it, it's not it's not the ideal platform. Um, but LinkedIn campaign, you know, we're doing a LinkedIn campaign right now because that's typically where the people are that we like to be having conversations with. I'm not saying I'm, you know, just cold calling them, but essentially you are. You know, you've got to be reaching out there, finding out what your uh, ideal customer is your customer persona whatever it is and go you know, go out there have have conversations but on that communication thing that personalization how many times a day john do you get a connection request on linkedin from people that says hi john 
saw your LinkedIn profile, would really like to add you to my network. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's coming up with, yeah. It frustrates the hell out of me. You know, yeah. if you've taken the time to find me and you've hit that button of connect, yeah. the very least you can do is say, hi Lee, really like some of those topics that you've been writing about lately. I found this one particularly funny. Uh, really keen to watch what you say from now on or, or listen or whatever it is. Um, some of it resonates with me because of ABC. It'd be great to have a chat. Yeah. Now I'm hooked. Now, now I'm intrigued. Now I want to chat with this person. But anybody that sends me a connection request that just says, can I please add you to my network? Yes, an immediate. No. Yeah, it's pointless. I I sorry, to, to, for information, uh, you, you can go on a potential client. If you're going to cherry pick, have a look at the website. Have a look at that individual. Try and get to, to, to see what that individual is all about first. And there's, like I say, there's enough information on the internet. And if you're going to connect to him, they have something relevant to say, something interesting to say. Yeah, um, Googling the, the a business. A different angle. Yeah, Googling the business. And, yeah, exactly. Googling the business and seeing what comes up in the news feeds, sp specifically look at news related to that, to that company. And if you see that this guy has written a white paper or he... Uh, posted something in the news about a new hire, whatever it is, show that you've taken that time to to do your homework about that company, right? Make yeah. it personal, make it show, make that person feel like then you haven't just hit a random connect, connect, connect. Um, yeah. That's uh, the bane of my life, you know, it's, it's it, know. You know, because they've just wasted their time. Yeah. The, the long and short of it is they've wasted their time. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, John, thanks, thanks so much. Um, really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I know our relationship will continue for many moons to come. Um, thanks for uh, the support you've given to my organisation and to the. Uh, I'm sure on behalf of your clients. You know, th thanks very much. Um, take care, my friend. And uh, yeah, appreciate your time. Catch up with you soon. Cheers, Lee.